This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. State education officials are threatening to suspend funding to Wisconsin's biggest school district. Milwaukee officials were supposed to turn over important financial reports eight months ago. The Department of Public Instruction says Milwaukee school officials have to submit an action plan to avoid having funds cut off. The Madison judge presiding over the latest Act 10 court case appears to have signed a recall petition against then-Governor Scott Walker. Governor Evers says Jacob Frost should not recuse himself. Oh, I don't think so. I, this, you know, rec- recusal is uh, is kind of a death knell of, uh, of, of judiciary. Let's just let it play out. Judge Frost could rule to restore union rights that many Wisconsin public workers lost in 2011. Yellow Home Food Delivery Service is closing four warehouses in Wisconsin. The company used to be known as Schwann's. It says it's closing operations in Eau Claire, Marshfield, Wausau, and Rice Lake. 32 people are being laid off. The company tells state officials the layoffs are permanent. The State of Wisconsin Investment Board is investing in cryptocurrency. The board manages assets for public employees' retirement funds. The most recent filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission shows it's invested more than $187 million in funds in companies associated with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Sunday is Heat Action Day. Wisconsin's population is getting older and climate change is making things dangerous. Dr. Freddie Otto is with World Weather Attribution. Especially for those elderly people, people living in poor housing in general, are those who bear the brunt of these extreme heat waves that we see across the world. Wisconsin spends 11 more days than we used to with highs in the 90s or hotter. Americans are drinking less milk than ever. Milwaukee Magazine reports fluid milk consumption has been dropping since the USDA began tracking it in 1975. Milk-like beverages made from almonds, oats, and soy are largely to blame. Wisconsin is the second leading milk-producing state in the nation behind California. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is looking for landowners who may be willing to host a gun deer hunt for hunters with disabilities this fall. According to a press release, the event is scheduled for October 5th to 13th, and to participate in the program, landowners must have at least 60 acres of land available, be able to host at least three hunters, and fill out the online application. The event has been going on since 1992 and has helped around 400 hunters with disabilities enjoy the sport each year. An unresponsive man in a boat was pulled from the water near a dam in Alma on Wednesday. According to the Buffalo County Sheriff's Office, an employee at Lock and Dam 4 reported that the boat was heading towards it with an unresponsive driver, and authorities were able to rescue the boater and bring him back to shore. The 64-year-old man who was in the boat was then arrested on suspicion of being under the influence of alcohol while operating the boat. The Sheriff's Office thanked the dam workers for their assistance. A well-known environmentally friendly scuba diver visited Eau Claire this week. According to a WEAU report, Ed Bieber, otherwise known as Ed the Diver, is visiting Eau Claire to pick up trash and other items from some local waterways like the Chippewa River and Lake Altoona. Bieber says he finds all kinds of interesting things in the water, like phones and watches, but the main goal of his dives is to encourage others to clean up their own waters. Bieber has also visited Door County and Wisconsin Dells. The city of Augusta is looking to raise over $120,000 to renovate and clean out eight parks. Some of the planned projects include renovations at Augusta City, Owls, Millstone, Main Street Gym Playground, Water Street, and Iron Brigade to add things like new basketball courts, trails, and more. City officials say they've already received about $70,000 in donations and are hoping to have a few of the projects completed by the end of the summer. Donations can be made at City Hall. The University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire has announced it will be removing the blue emergency telephone poles on its campus. According to a WQOW report, campus police say the emergency phones have been used just three times since 2015 and the vast majority of emergency calls are placed from a cell phone. UWEC officials believe their efforts are best spent educating students on the capabilities of cell phones in an emergency situation rather than spending their time maintaining the emergency phone poles. 
The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is reminding residents of its 12th annual free fun weekend. According to a press release, state park admission fees, fishing licenses, and trail passes will be waived for all visitors on Saturday and Sunday. Officials hope that the free weekend gives residents an opportunity to enjoy everything the state parks have to offer and convince them to give the annual pass or fishing license a try. The free fun weekend will also feature free fishing clinics for fishing beginners. The city of Eau Claire responded to a sewer spill on Monday. According to a press release from the city, a sanitary sewer overflowed on the 1200 block of Blazing Star Boulevard on Monday, spilling about 500 gallons of sewage onto the bike trail and walking path in the area and a nearby parking lot. City officials say the leak was caused by a temporary bypass piping from a rehabilitation project at the lift station. The temporary bypass was shut down briefly while crews cleaned the spill and fixed the leak. The city of Eau Claire voted on a number of important resolutions on Tuesday night. The city council voted to pass a resolution to give a nearly $17 million contract to Miron Construction for the construction of a new PFAS removal facility at the water treatment plant. The city also voted to approve a settlement with Menards Incorporated on an excessive property tax assessment lawsuit against the city. The city council also introduced the rezoning of the Regency Inn and Suites from a residential to commercial property. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Brewers clock the Cubs. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. It was a big night for the Brewers outfielder Blake Perkins with unbelievable catches in center field and making a difference at the plate. And a home run saving catch in the top of this frame. In the air, left center field, got some carry. Hop at the wall, it's gone! Blake Perkins have a night! Two-run home run for Perkins. 7-1 Brewers in the third inning. Brian Anderson, Valley Sports, Wisconsin. Final score, the Brewers 10, the Cubs 6. Perkins and the crew defense making big plays. Manager Pat Murphy. One would have been a grand slam. One would have been a three-run triple probably if he didn't catch it in the corner. And the other diving one, there had to be at least two guys on. So, I mean, you're talking nine runs that you save, plus the inning's still going. Oh, wait a minute. By the way, he made three unbelievable catches, saved all those rounds, and, by the way, Homer. <laughs> Game to remember. NFL at the Packers OTAs, defensive back Jair Alexander says he's determined to be more of a team player. Uh, You know, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, like I said, just going into year seven, I, you know, at this point, it's, 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 I'm trying not to make as much about myself and, uh, you know, just do what's best for the team. That's Jair Alexander with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. I'm Pete with the 60-second Showbiz Beat. There is a new social media conspiracy theory around the film Finding Nemo. At the beginning of the movie, Barracuda is blamed for eating all the eggs that would have been Nemo's brothers and sisters. A TikToker says it had to have been Nemo's mom who ate the eggs as clownfish eat their own eggs, but barracudas do not eat clownfish eggs. This comes just a few years after another social media theory that says Nemo was a hallucination and never even existed. Kathy Lee Gifford says God told her to forgive Howard Stern for her and Stern's decades-long animosity. Gifford says despite the fact that Stern said horrible things about her and her family, she felt it was time to move on after 30 years. When she heard he was in the building at NBC one day, she walked down to the studio where Stern was, said hello, and that she forgave him. Stern was moved, and now they are friends. And just when I thought God was way too busy blessing sneezers or helping my favorite sports teams win a game, he or she found time to help two rich people work through their silly sh**. Doesn't it stink when you're a highly successful TV actor, but you will only make $1 million an episode? That was Patricia Richardson's salary in the closing days of Home Improvement. Her co-star, Tim Allen, one of the show's creators, was making $2 million an episode. Her co-star, Tim Allen, one of the show's creators, was making $2 million an episode, which, according to the 73-year-old actress, was just the excuse she needed to leave a very successful acting job and highly popular TV sitcom. Must have been torture being saddled with all that money for so many years in a row when all you really wanted to do is have a paper route. A big misconception is that Hollywood is totally liberal. There are many conservative executives and actors in Tinseltown. One such example is Dennis Quaid, who is portraying Ronald Reagan in a new biopic titled Reagan. Quaid told Piers Morgan that Reagan is his favorite president and in the same interview also professed support for former President Trump, saying that Trump is an a-hole, but he's my a-hole. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba. Furiosa was number one at the box office this past holiday weekend, but the box office lag continues as theaters saw the weakest Memorial Day weekend for ticket sales in 35 years. 
The Mad Max film, which had been hyped beyond belief and was well-reviewed by critics, took in only $32 million over the four-day weekend. Some prognosticators continue to blame the pandemic, but others counter that we've had recent huge box office successes in the last few years, including Barbenheimer, The Little Mermaid, and Top Gun Maverick, continuing to make tracking numbers at theaters a bit of an anomaly. One positive on the horizon for this summer is Wolverine and Deadpool, which doesn't open until late July but has already broken records for pre-sale tickets. Rounding out the top five from last weekend were kid-friendly Garfield in a close second place to Furiosa, the John Krasinski family film If, which came in third, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, and The Fall Guy came in fourth and fifth place, respectively. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Abundant sunshine and seasonal today, with high temperatures climbing to the mid-70s alongside a calm wind. The only downfall is scattered showers and thunderstorms push in by early tomorrow morning and dampen our Friday. I'm meteorologist Brittany Merlot. Currently, it's 69 degrees. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WCFW.FM or thetap.fm.